Ladies and gentlemen, David Dubine from Adapt 2030 joining us today. Always a pleasure to have him on the show. And we're going to be talking about a number of topics, preparedness, censorship, the woo flu, and many other things. Most importantly, David's new channel, Mini Ice Age Conversations, which he started over on YouTube. We want everyone to go over there and subscribe, give him some support. This is a channel where you can get small 30 minute snippets of his radio show and other small podcasts that he's gonna tell us more about right now. And welcome to the show, Mr. Dubine. You're looking fantastic. How you doing? Yeah, a little chilly over here in East Tennessee, but yeah, thank you. And also, for those of you who don't follow Diamond's work on my channel, make sure you jump over to Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch Project. It's been a while since we've had a chance to connect here, and we were talking crypto the other night, so we thought to get together here about, you know, what does he see in the future and what do I see in the future? And hopefully between, like, what I might see my version of it and what he sees his version that there, there's something in there that everybody can glean from it. Do your own research. You know, after we talk, it's not about us telling you anything. It's about we put some ground nuggets out there for you, and you need to do your own research on everything said from this point forward. But, you know, these massive changes we're seeing only verifies for me that the food shortages are inbound on this grand solar minimum. Uh, the electromagnetic connections of the gas giants really going to start affecting the – uh, food production capability globally here. Now, the grand solar minimum is one thing, and you know, the sun's going to behave strangely, and electromagnetic effects there, that's part of it. But then we have the second little wild card thing happening that hasn't happened since 79 AD that will occur in October of 2024. These four Jovian gas giants in the uh, outer solar system are going to be lining up and creating their own magnetic torus field, along with what we have with the sun over here and its, its own magnetic field as well. But see, what I found most interesting in the, the study of history is the Anunnaki, they used to count the planets from the outer, furthest planet out, like Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, and bring it on in, Saturn, Jupiter, and then we got Mars. So if you got these four outer gas giants lining up into their own magnetic field, you only need to go Mars and then Earth. So we'll be the second planet in from that new magnetic field. But if you count from the sun, we're the third, the third planet going out, Mercury, Venus, Earth. So we're going to be stuck sort of in the middle between two Taurus looping magnetic fields for a short amount of time in 2024. Some say this will have no effect. I'm saying that Pluto's atmosphere collapsed already back in, yeah. well, the end of 2019. And then Neptune's atmosphere reversed itself six months ago, or six months after that. And yeah. it came in uh, December. So you go back December and then you subtract six months and you go back into uh, the beginning of the year and you have these two planetary anomalies that are unexplainable, but magnetic field are intensing in that Taurus wave that's forming now. So Jupiter and Saturn, when we got to that great conjunction, that was, a, that was the overstep of the next magnetic coupling beginning between a more intense field forming. So if Pluto's atmosphere anomalies, you're... Uranus and Neptune are going to be, so keep your eyes out on Uranus there because Neptune's atmosphere reversed, the storm broke up, and there are already some anomalies happening on Uranus. So you got to think, all right, and what's next? Jupiter and Saturn? Well, one of the bands disappeared on Jupiter already for the storm band. Mm -hmm. So, like, what's going on magnetically out there where these planets are already showing severe effects? Like, if they're going to couple at that point, you think we're going to see it here on Earth and not be affected? This is, explains an enormous amount to me what's going on right now because governments are going to need to control the citizens that are going to be not having enough food. So everything you're seeing is theater around giving governments more control to control the food supply and control distribution. And I don't think that's where we're sitting right now. I'm trying to explain it from a scientific fashion that there's some huge, massive changes. Grand solar minimum is going to be two cycles of what we're seeing right now, of this uh, planetary alignment's coming up. See... After 2024, those planets aren't going to do the same thing as we committed 28, 29, 30. It's only this once in this particular cycle that hasn't been seen 79 AD. So it's really interesting how it's looping up, mapping up, electromagnetically, electromagnetically uh, connecting together. So I don't know, what are, you, what are your feelings on that, Diamond? How do you think uh, that the magnetic reversal, planetary spins, jet stream anomalies, food shortages, and cycles of time are overlapping and governments behaving right today. Are you seeing any kind of similarity of how governments might control the populace if they know this cycle's inbound and, and manifesting right now into like a, a higher echelon where it's going to be no longer coverable anymore? Everybody's going to notice it and you can't cover it up anymore. Yeah, well, let me just uh, 
uh, add to what you said about the gas giants. A, a recent paper came out on Uranus. So we, we know about um, the reversal of Neptune and the weather systems there happening recently. We know about Jupiter's atmosphere being stripped. Now, a paper came out recently about Uranus and its atmosphere is, be, has been be, being torn away for decades and is increasing. So what we now has, have is confirmation of all the, external, uh, the exterior planets. The gas giants, including Pluto, are rapidly changing. So these are facts. Another thing we laid out on our channel was the fact that um, the great conjunction, that the, which, is called, which is every 20 years, but every three great conjunctions is a super great conjunction where they're very close. This is a 60-year cycle that directly corresponds to the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Now, the last time we had this 60-year cycle kick off in the 60s, it dropped down to the Ice Age scare of 1974. So we're now on that flexure point where we have a, now we have a 15-year drop down into a cooling a cycle based simply on the ocean. Now, we couple this with the gas giant conjunction in 2024, and I believe that that's the tipping point to continue to drop it down into the new ice age, which happens at this time uh, in the past always. Now, it typically takes about a thousand years to to drop down into ice age, so most of us won't see the maximum glaciation. But what ensues is collapse of food systems. And with the pandemic uh, being pushed on humanity, I believe it's by design. Now let's just talk about hungry Americans. Last year there were 20 million Americans that were hungry. This year they're estimating 50 to 60 million currently are undernourished, and that number is rapidly rising. This can be used as a control mechanism by the powers that be, and we, we know about this historically. So this isn't a new thing, it's not a new tool, but I think people need to wake up. We've been saying this for years now, you and I, grow your own food, self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and food security is the key to surviving and thriving in the future. What say you? Well, yeah, the governments just have better models now to know when the exact onset dates are going to be for the food shortages. Before, you know, they knew it would be in this decade or something. Because you have to think about how much uh, information was there before the marauding and pillaging of more of the ancient cultures, which occurred from, say, the late 1400s through the late 1700s. And there was a lot of information garnered and compartmentalized and compiled together to get a much better you know, recollection of what the historical cycles were. But prior to that time, you know, that's why they had so many soothsayers and they were people, astrologers focused on the stars. Like they knew all of this was happening on a cyclical basis. I think it's about the Brooklyn currents running through or, you know, how much power is coming to the star. Because when you're looking at the procession of the equinoxes, when, you, when you're going around through each star sign in the zodiac, each one of them has a different energetic frequency associated with it. So we're stepping into Aquarius, which is they call the lightning bolt of energy. So obviously things are going to move faster. You know, cryptocurrency is a direct result of that old clunky stuff. You know, and what you didn't mention about the uh, the conjunction there was we also changed zodiacal signs. We moved into Aquarius in that first day of the first minute of the first second of that new degree mark into Aquarius. But astrologically, we move from the earth sign into the air sign, and that'll be staying there for another 200 years. So you got two of the, two energetic cycles both jumped up exponentially. So governments know these changes are here. They have better instrumentation to really get at it and understand down to the minute what these cycles will be or down to the same month period. So the amount of preparation could be extended. You know, you got to think about the governments of England or Spain or something back in the 1640s or 1630s. They probably knew the changes were coming in, say, 1620. Some things started to get a little tweaky. And uh, on prior uh, knowledge of cycles of the heavens, you know, maybe in the 1630, they really started, okay, it's going to happen sometime now. So imagine if you could really wire it down, you could get seven extra years of preparation. And here's where we sit, I think. Yeah, well, I think that the governments are using that historical information uh, as well as this pandemic. Oh, yeah. Uh, to now, uh, what they're doing is they've divided us, right? The disinformation is complete. The division is there. They're trying to incite riots, the pillaging, the raping and pillaging of times of yore. They want that to come back in full force across the nation. 
albeit sporadic or controlled uh, false flags, however they do it, they're going to use that as an excuse for new draconian lockdowns, police state measures. Uh, we were talking about this last night, how we're, we're going to be rationed times when we can go to the store. The, the multinational corporations are continuing to function. Our ability to go there as free humans is what's going to be restricted. And they're going to use it under the guise of security because, uh, you know, the useless eaters don't know how to act, so to speak. Yeah, blockchain applications too. If you're going to get a ration card, I can't see us walking around with, you know, pieces of paper in our pocket. It's either going to be an app on the phone or it's going to be, it'll, that'll be, okay, the access point to you to prove it to a store that you're allocated this much for sugar, flour, butter, whatever it is, will be on the app on your phone. But the true uh, allocation for you is going to be stored in the blockchain. So, you know, saw on these last couple of years here how uh, governments were moving to blockchain technology and it wasn't, you know, not cryptocurrency, blockchain technology. So if you can store immutable data where it can't be changed inside the blockchain, well, our U.S. government has been working with that for quite some time. And then they could put it on the protocol there. And universal basic income is going to be coming in through a digital wallet eventually. Not, I can't give you a date on a, on a month here that will occur. But that's all going to go digital. Central bank digital currencies route and the... Uh, who was that? The Comptroller of Currency just was last week gave full OK and authority for any bank or any corporation to settle using stable coins across borders now. So like the movement directly into cryptocurrency usage is, is one thing in payment systems, cross border swaps, payments, whatever. That's one thing. That's set A. Set B is information storage mm -hmm. and then onward verification onto uh some sort of wallet or pass, if you will. It's all going to be digital. The new ration cards are going to be digital cards now, linked to your phone. Right. And, and they're, they're rapidly passing. They're putting together a 20,000 page domestic terrorist bill just a, a few days after the quote unquote insurrection at the Capitol. And this is going to be more draconian than uh, any of the measures passed after 9-11. We all remember how our civil liberties were stripped back then, and we became a surveillance state. The next level, I don't think that the general public has any idea what this bill is going to entail. No one's going to read 20,000 pages, but the next level is going to be epic. They're going to know so much about every individual, your movements based on this bill, and they're going to be able to lock you up, remove you from society based on things you say. That's what the bill's all about. It's about the destruction of the Constitution in our country, the destruction of civil liberties, the destruction of freedom of speech. The censorship we saw by big tech in the last 48 hours should be scaring the pants off of everyone because this is simply a sign of things to come. Yeah, what else have you seen in that bill? I'm not really familiar with it. I've seen hearsay of it, but I've been too busy doing other things. So how, how do you think it's going to erode down into your ability to get food in the future for the average citizen? You know, we grow our own food and we have access to farms and more farming communities. But for those in cities, Diamond, how do you think that's going to affect them versus persons in the rural areas? Well, I think that the domestic terrorism bill is going to be used to incite violence across the country. And then they can then impose the types of rationing or ration cards that we're talking about digitally. So the initial bill is to further divide the populace and create these spontaneous, let's say, civil war type actions where people are going to fight back against the system. And, and then they're, they're, that's going to allow the government for ever more draconian lockdowns and say, look, if you can't act civilized, we're going to tell you when you can shop. We're going to tell you when you can go see a movie and we're going to tell you when you have to be home and in bed. Well, that's already started in Canada. You see that 8 p.m. to whatever curfew. It's the first one. And I, I'm doing a story on this right now. Like the Canadian uh, news is coming out saying we're going to have to implement more draconian measures. Like they didn't even use softer language. They just first paragraph it has to be more draconian you guys aren't behaving and it's the first time in canada they've ever done such thing arrest on site after 801 and they're doing that right now 802 and they're dragging people off the streets yeah i saw and running around every street and every 
sirens on. That's crazy. Like Canada's already jumping the shark going way ahead of where it's at because they know there'll be no pushback. There's none. I mean, America has fallen to the point that we are now unless it recoups. Uh, Canada's already taken it, saying America's not going to be We're done. Let's just go straight ahead with the globalist agenda. We're jumping straight into it, and here we go. Let the world emulate us as we're trying to emulate China's. You know, I lived in China for a while and worked over there, so I know what it can be like. And anybody who hasn't been and lived or worked and been around a lot of socialist communist nations, you have no idea what's in store for you. Now, when You, you were, might think you're going to be out of the loop. When you were there, were you part of that social credit system, or had you gotten out already? I got out already, but it just was beginning, and they called it social, or was it sesame, sesame credit? And it, when I was there, they were trying to make it into more of a play game, uh, like a test thing for the first three years. And people really adopted it because, hey, that's cool. And uh, you know, like for us on social media, think about social media. If you had a, an account on Twitter or Facebook and you were trying to get interviews with higher level people, you know, a lot of times it's difficult to get to them because there's gatekeepers there or whatever. But the social credit score, social system, or the Sesame Credit allowed you to get in at upper tiers where you were allowed to access people at higher levels in terms of social media to get up to higher level people. Because now you could connect them one on one, but before you couldn't if you weren't in the social, like the Sesame Credit thing. It was all role play, play thing, but it al allowed you real time, real world access to, you know, more uh, intense interviews with higher levels of uh, subscribers and whatever. Like we have, they have their own systems over there, you know. But people loved it, and they slow drifted in and now you can't do anything they have the real-time facial recognition where you walk across the street and by the other time you got to the street your face is on a billboard you've been doctor social credit and they leave you up there until the next person crosses the street you know you're talking about one and a half billion people i know they probably categorize you down to which city you live in but still to run through you know 20 million faces within seconds and then have you by the time you walk across the street find and your picture up there with your data which company you work at so then somebody can go and say fire this person they uh you know all your public data is put right up on that billboard up there your date of birth if you live your street address your telephone number and which company you're working with that's crazy and that's what they do with you know like i don't know if there's identity theft or you know there well you wouldn't want to steal anybody's identity because you don't know how bad they were social credit wise right well, it, I've, this, so. is, this is how bad it is. Yesterday, I saw people in Canada getting arrested for sledding. Now, they call it tobogganing up in Canada. But kids were getting arrested and tackled for tobogganing and ice skating. So, I mean, it, it's getting insane in Canada. But furthermore, let's talk about doxing on Twitter. The, it's almost like uh, we've entered... Uh, Germany in the late 30s, there are people doxing uh, people that showed up at that Capitol rally, which was stop the steal. It, it is a constitutional right to address grievances against uh, corrupt governments. This is written in our constitution. And now there are people, citizens of the United States that are tattling on their neighbors and friends and said they were there. They were at the rally. They're insurrectionists and they're getting fired from their job. Their careers are ending. This is not America. This is so disgusting. I don't even know how to explain it. And at this point, there's nowhere else you can really escape from this because it is a globalist stronghold idea that is now being adopted by the elites all over the world. So how we end this uh, is anyone's guess. It's only going to ramp up from here. The best way you can protect yourself is to be away from these major cities. This is where the control mechanism is going to really be able to crank down. You're not going to be able to travel. You're not going to be able to move at some point, unless you have a good reason, probably. So if you're on the head uh, fence about moving or relocating, do it today. Don't even wait. Pack your bags and get out and go rural. This, I think, is the only hope where we'll have a chance to maybe reorganize. And, and people in rural areas like where I am, I mean, there's very little effect Nobody wears masks where I live uh, unless you drive 20 minutes to go to the store where the little people are at the door like, do you need a mask? Here's a mask. So, I mean, and they just put it on to comply. So it's very transparent out here how ridiculous um, all of these measures are. And let me bring something up to you. I don't know if you saw this article. This is actually the New York Times False reports of the new U.S. variant come directly from the White House Task Force and Dr. Burks. I'm going to leave a link to that article below. 
I'm sure a lot of people have read over the last week that we have this new super rapid spreading virus. Mm -hmm. It first showed up in Colorado and then it's in Florida and California. All of that was BS. These are lies directly from Deborah Burks in the White House task force. Now, why do you think she re is going to retire? I mean, give me a break. This is such, such fraud. It's beyond belief. Now, and don't get me started on the PCR tests and why all these draconian lockdowns are because of cases. The people don't realize that 80% of the cases, none of the people are even sick. That's how sick this fraud is. And I'm getting a little heated. <laughs> Simon, I'm going to stop you on the PCR. Stop, stop on the PCR, Diamond. Stop it. I might, I might go and take you back a step there on, you know, you, you talked about the globalist rollout. It was around the entire planet before it came to the United States. We're the only country left that hadn't been taken over and pushed into that whole globalist agenda narrative already. Like the U.S. was the last bastion of stopping that from running amok across the entire planet. We're the United States was. I can't think of any other country that was left in a sort of a Western demographic that was there to say no or stop anything. It was the U.S. was the last one. So now that things have changed here, it now it brings me back to the food supply chain because if it's on an hour one globalist uh, agenda, they're trying to switch to a one global currency. Okay, that'll facilitate supply chains. They're also with an allocation of resources to share all resources across all countries. So it seems like there's a streamlining of continuity of government preparedness and preps in terms of any kind of uh, foods, energies, raw materials are not going to be able to move across any border with no constraints whatsoever at all. None. So in these last three years here, before we come into this, you'll see how much change there'll be. Uh, they, they'll give you rations, which will probably be, you know, 20 percent of the global, like, let's say, uh, raw materials total. But the other 80 percent are going to go cross border and you'll never even see what's happening because all these uh, since it'll be a globalist agenda at that point, there'll be no push. There'll be nobody that will object to anything of any resource being for the people of that country. This the nationalism thing will be totally gone. We're all resource. All the world shares all the resources because we're one people. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing. But there's going to be a lot. We grew up in a different age. So probably 2 billion people are the ones that have a different thought. So as we see history play out, if you think differently, you're not going to be welcome in the new world. Just the allied and see, I can't really, I don't know what's happening because whatever was told to the politicians in America, that something so ferocious and so dangerous and so like life ending extinction level event, something was given to them where nobody objected to the elections at all. And they're like, OK, we're going to go totally globalist, totally uh, communist, whatever, socialist, global idealist and let one person run it all. And we need to get prepared now. Something like that happened where I just can't see anything else other than maybe they were told about the gas giants lining up finally in a scientific presentation where they're like, oh, no, what? We're not going to be able to control that. Yeah, that could be so something really jumped the shark there. And you know, America was the only place that was left that wasn't totally globalist controlled like everywhere else was at least in my own travels and understanding about how the world was working before i came back from this uh nuttiness out there on the planet america was the only place left that wasn't totally globalist control now we're going to be and now it's uh you're no longer needed yeah now now here's the interesting thing because the whole globalist mantra and and the mantra of the extreme left now is this whole term equity where everyone's equal and we all have the same outcome and everybody's happy um but i don't really how is that going to happen i mean let's just talk about the vaccine rollout what we've seen in the last 48 to 72 hours is that there isn't fair and equitable rollout of this vaccine. Third world countries don't even have their first doses. The poorest countries don't have any of the vaccine. And we're seeing the richest people and the richest hospitals here in the U.S. Everyone gets vaccinated, even the janitor. Uh, but the but the peons in the third world countries, they don't we're not giving them vaccines yet. So it's the almighty dollar that's buying the vaccine nation by nation. So how do how is this equitable, fair, equitable, global, blah, 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 going to roll out when there is obviously uh, there's no evidence of that happening? And well, it's not meant to. It's just a narrative. And, you know, the only way I think really you can fight back now is using your money and taking your money out of the system. So any global fiat system convert over to crypto or convert it into something else, gold, silver. 
uh, that can be tradable in your communities, but you got to get off the uh, the system that's funding everything. So uh, I know there's going to be a lot of money market managers out there and things that, oh, I can't do that. It's my job. I got to invest and whatnot. But you saw what Michael Saylor was doing. He was taking his whole firm micro strategy and bringing it all into a full Bitcoin play where uh, grayscale, you, you had to pay a premium on it to even get in ex exposure to Bitcoin. So you can see how some companies are starting to dump the U.S. dollars and dump fiat and come complete crypto and then use that as a, a proxy fund for it. And look at Michael Saylor. I mean, that, that the business model that could change the world back to fighting against this corptocracy or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the only way to do it is through money now. That's going to be the only way. And I think Saylor's onto something about moving companies over to any whatever money's on their balance sheet, put it into crypto, leave whatever you need for running expenses out in the regular traditional banking system, but run crypto up so high that nobody else wants to ever invest in anything ever again except for crypto. And then the stock market starts to dwindle and those companies lose their funds and the tax base gets eroded. And then we start to get this downward spiral of fiat usage and delivery mechanism into the governments that can continue to create endless wars and hunt people down who don't agree with the same politics. Like we need to remove the money first. If we can remove the money first, that'll that'll be the way that the system will change. Don't put your money in the fiat system anymore. Take it out and put it somewhere else where it's going to grow in value anyway, and take away uh, the, the monster's power right there. Yeah, I mean, we're talking. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, one hundred percent. And 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 the reason is because over the last several years, I've seen all the top financial advisors and people who poo pooed uh, crypto as a bubble and it's going to crash. They're dumping billions of dollars in plays. One guy tried to buy eight hundred Bitcoin in one play on Coinbase last week, and Coinbase was like, "Yeah, we can do that, but we got to buy three Bitcoins an hour, or the whole system will explode." There are so many people dumping their entire fiat cash into the crypto market that anyone out there listening, I would say take 50% of all your cash or your holdings and put it in crypto now. And then as it goes up exponentially, you could be withdrawing three, four, five times the amount of money you ever put in in a few years. If you need to buy stuff, you could buy land, preps, mm -hmm. stuff you will need in the future, uh, like greenhouses solar panels and stuff like that. So it's definitely uh, the way to go in the future. And I, I mean, I can't say enough about it. There's also precious metals. They're tradable locally in your community. They've always had value since humans were uh, civilized. So precious metals are definitely a way to go also. And those will go up, up and up uh, over the next few years. And if you ever need any money, I'm sure you could easily cash it out because the number one problem now is finding silver. When the price dips, there's none available because it all gets bought up. So in the next year or so, I would recommend everyone uh, getting out of their fiat money, their 401k and all that garbage and put it into crypto and uh, put it into precious metals and buy practical stuff you need in case maybe the stores aren't open or you do have a ration card and you want a little extra food. Just my simple thoughts. Yeah, none of this is financial advice. We're just throwing some ideas back and forth on how we think the system might be changed here. Uh, and remember the black market's been around for as long as as long as silver's been around. I mean, there's been a black market for 8,000 years. So just because we're in a digital age where you might have a track and trace thing on your phone, you think the still black market's not gonna exist? The only people who are really paying attention to the rules are the ones who are like the soft Americans in these all Western countries that are just so backward and bending over for it right now. But go over to Russia and see how easily they obey uh, like globalist agenda. They pulled out of it. You know, and you start to take a look at some of these other countries. They're like, we're not playing by your rules. Now, oh, those are the ones that are demonized now. You ever notice where the, the globalists never got such a, a control like grip on the society? They're the ones that have been demonized and tried to be overthrown again and again and again. Just who do, who can you list in the news? That's a top three or four that you keep hearing. Bad boy, bad country, bad people, bad leader, bad politics, bad so bad form of government. Because they don't have this global centralist banks in there controlling everything. They got their own banks doing their own thing using metals, and they're taking care of their citizens at a higher level. And guess who those you could probably name a few right or roll off the tongue again and again, decade after decade. Why is it the same countries that we keep facing that are the enemy have been around for so many decades? It's because they haven't catoed and gotten into central banking on the globalist level for several decades, and they're still the targets.
still the targets. Yeah, and so that means that there's going to be some type of war coming up in the future to get everyone in line or to punish those who are not in line. And we were talking about that earlier. There, And you didn't use the word war. You used a different term. What was that? Aggression. Yes. So that's what we have to look forward to. Now let's just, before we close up, and we've gone 30 minutes, and let's just do another podcast in a week or so and continue this conversation. Um, uh, Diamond, Diamond, let me stop here. Go ahead. We can, we can do 33 minutes. Yeah, let's do it. We'll freak everyone out. <laughs> so we've got these global aggressions coming up. Uh, the, glo- the Great Reset is happening before our very lives. And um, what should we be doing now to prepare? How long do you think until the uh, financial markets collapse here in the U.S. and worldwide? Because I think it's going to be in line with those global aggressions. All happens at the same time. Yeah, don't quote me on it, but April, first weeks of April this year. Wow, that's soon. Well, and hopefully you can hold enough cash so you can scoop up some crypto super cheap after, because everything will crash at the same time. So, you know, with the crypto investing, uh, realize that when the stocks crash, everybody's, they're going to have to try to get money to, to cover shorts and do a few other things. So there'll probably be a huge pull out of the crypto space for a moment, a moment. And yeah. once it hits that rock bottom level, everything is going to skyrocket. And from that point, crypto will be the new currency. That whole thing, whenever you see this globalist aggression thing happen, It'll be a global thing. Now, it's not really termed as a war. It's a, it's an event of aggression that lasts for you know about two weeks. But then it's that's the reset for the money system. Hmm. Once it's mm-hmm. over, mm-hmm. cryptocurrency will be the new money. Blockchain will be the new technology, and central bank digital currency will be your new mama. That'll give you the money that you need, mm-hmm. so you can mm-hmm. still uh, get some milk at the store. <laughs> So when that happens, you know, the crypto at that point, it's going to run away. Like you'll never see another $100,000 Bitcoin at that point. You're going to be looking at half a million, million, five million, 15 million at the end run of it. So uh, the, after this aggression, it, the, it'll separate the the early havers from nobody will ever get it. Because it, it, think about it, uh, even a $250,000 Bitcoin, how many people can even get, how many Satoshis could you buy of that? Yeah. You know, people are going to be moving into, you know, cheaper coins at that point. But, you know, Ethereum would be $80,000 at that point. Yeah. You know, so then where do you come down the line? You got all these other ones we're looking at, but they're going to be in multi hundreds or thousands as well. So when the new system comes, all the entire world's money of what, like $300 trillion is going to get put into that system. And you got to watch Michael Saylor's video. I'll send you the link here. It's the most informative video I've ever seen on it. It really changed my frame of reference of what's happening with the institutional investors coming in. See, they're not trying to play the markets up and down to gain money. Like these companies coming in, they're looking for a store of value. And generally, you know, they would put it in on markets or whatever. And now they're saying, well, we're insulted that you, we have to take a negative interest rate yielding note on that. And then we got to pay you to hold our money. Yeah. Well, the real big money is starting to look and go, hey, what if we, Bitcoin's a real store of value. What if we just start loading our cash in there and instead of, paying uh you know half percent one percent on a negative yield why don't we just put it in there and make uh micro strategy will be the the highest gaining uh fund and, and company for this year just based on their bitcoin sales i think they rounded out around all in they bought thirty thousand at twenty thousand they bought thirty thousand plus bitcoin twenty nine thousand bitcoin around twenty thousand dollars yeah but they would dollar cost average from say nine up through 15 and 20 and uh they already doubled their portfolio for the year this is where it's moving. And once the bit, and he, he had a whole plan. He's like, all right, all you other billionaires out there, use the 0% money you're getting from the government and come in and just buy Bitcoin with it and we'll all work together as a, and he was trying to, well, I have a, I have a strategy. So hopefully they're the white hat strategies that are going to come out and try to move this away from the fiat money system. But you know, are we jumping into another more controlled system? Because if it comes out of fiat money and we go into central bank digital currency, which can be more closely monitored versus out in the wild, if you will, crypto. Yeah, we have to keep a close eye on know. that uh, because they are trying to ramp up regulation on cryptocurrency. And, you know, if, if anything like that happens, I'm out as, as quick as possible. Just dump it, buy some land, get what I need. But uh, it is definitely a, a, an excellent uh, hedge against uh, what's coming. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you guys. The, the main point we wanted to have this podcast for is to get everyone over to Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast, Dubai's newest channel. 
Um, he also is the creator of Adapt2030. He's all over the place on Twitch and Stitcher and Twitter and uh, on and on. Here he's got a Patreon, Facebook. Twitter's gone, man. Oh, you did take down your Twitter. Well, good on I'll you. I'll never do another Twitter post again. I'm off. Well, hey, one last question, Don. You, you mentioned exiting everything out, pulling into land. Mm -hmm. But what do you think would prevent land confiscation in the future, especially if it's farmland, like productive farmland? You yeah. know, in history, all these despots, that's the first first or second thing they go for is productive farmland and try to put the cadres out there that don't even know how to do anything except open a jar and then think they're going to get record production out of the out of the farms because you got a bunch of cadres out there like, grow food, okay. <laughs> no, I would buy, I would put, sink it into, so what do you think that? I would sink it into atypical land with a huge slope where you can't farm it, but you can terrace farm south facing so you could build into the side of the hill. It's the, in areas in rural areas where in smaller lots, not bigger units so, so that they could, they basically forget about you. So you want to be looking for really reclusive areas that have really little function. And if you clear some of the trees and start terrace farming, not only is it good for security because you can look down on people, um, but it just, I, I don't see the government come there and because uh, you can't plow it under and, and put food there. Um, in the end game, we don't own anything. That's why we, our, our names are capitalized on our uh, driver's license. The government owns us uh, due to maritime law. And it's a really scary thing to think about that humans are commodities. Final words. Not if you're an off-planet species and, and the earth is nothing more than a large farm with different farming techniques for different continents and countries. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. All right, so we'll pick this up in a week or so. That's my final thought. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> Check out Dubai over at uh, Adapt2030 on YouTube. Uh, Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast. We'll have it linked right below. Click on there, become a new subscriber. Check out some of his content. Is there anything else you want to plug? Or, uh, you, you've... Shut down your Twitter. Are you over on Parler or Gab or something? Yeah, I'm up on Gab, Mines, Parler, and Bright Chill on a bit shoot. And that, that'll be an easy way to find so far. But I, I just, I don't want to waste my time or money continuing to pay people to post for me or wasting my time to post up there. If, you know, I've been suspended off there twice already. I didn't really tell that, but I was going to be working a little video. So far, my account's been suspended twice in the last, say, two months off of Twitter anyway, where I was on like a three-day suspension. Mm -hmm. And I never knew what it was for. It was just regular news articles calling out some of the climate hypocrisy and uh, new findings about uh, the non-effectiveness of CO2 for warming and uh, the way that things that were said 2014, hey, Al Gore, ice-free Arctic, whatever, let's go sit on the beach. And we're still sitting here with like, you know, huge amounts of ice. Uh, Arctic, Antarctic has recovered with the sea ice above the 30-year baseline mm -hmm. average from 1981 forward and uh you know just posting like this these kind of things get you a three-day suspension i just it's truth like if you get suspended for showing a truth for article that's on a mainstream news publication what is the problem with that <laughs> yeah i have a problem with that yeah free speech is dead and we need to rise up and fight back but anyway yeah please come and join me on the thing where at? Yeah, please come and join me because Diamond and I have some previous episodes that uh, I'm hosting up there as well. Because Diamond, a few of our previous interviews, any of the long content that I've ever done through the history of my channel is going on that channel. And I know you and I have a fair few, not only live interviews like this, but a fair few uh, podcasts where it was just strictly audio when you joined my radio program a time or two. Yeah. So all that's being hosted over on Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast channel on YouTube and uh, continuing to populate that. You know, we're trying to put about three to four of the older episodes on there and I'm working on a new podcast today as well hopefully to get up there and uh yeah between that and the last thing I would say is grow your own food go to a seed site I don't care what seed site you go to we're not pushing any hyperlinks here for affiliates but wherever you can go go buy seeds today I don't care what you get get food get that get one of those packs that includes an entire garden kit yeah because if you're starting from scratch and you really don't know how to grow a lot you're not going to want to go for a, a targeted species of like five pounds of like collard greens or something because you're going to be like, oh that's not, i don't know how to cook it you know whatever get the full garden packs so you have a full range and you can experiment with things and you know a lot of people you'd be surprised a lot of people around you know how to grow things but you just never had that conversation with them yeah. so why don't you start scaring sharing skill sets of you know so your next door neighbor maybe has a, a kind of a flower well maybe they could grow marigolds because then you could boil that down to a tincture for antibiotic or maybe like myself i know how to grow moringa oleifera why don't we bring that in and you know, like a lot of people have skill sets you just don't know until you start asking about their childhoods. You don't know where they grew up. You know, what what did they do as a family when they were kids? You know, a lot of stuff is 
unknown to these days you're with your neighbors and uh, other people online in your communities and i joined the beekeepers association because i want to learn how to raise bees but i don't have my own boxes and i haven't done that before it's something new for me and i'm trying to build that skill set but there's others real close to me that i've been doing it for 30 years oh yeah like those are the people i want to learn from so get stuff the sustainability and find people close to you and just go out and learn from them you know i i was invited because they're like man we got to get these bee boxes we got to get them ready for winterize them but you know that's a lot of work to pick all that up and scrape things and put it back and cover and do all this thing and uh you know it's a lot of work you got 20 hives and another person has 50 over here another person has 10 you go start lifting those you know honey's heavy it's like 150 pounds that's fully laden but you got to leave the bottom couple you know yeah like it's a lot of heavy work lifting you're just thinking oh i'm gonna get a candle out of a bee awesome no you're lifting you know nobody's expecting that so learn skills you can do just grow food um, learn how to make your own medicines how to make your own tinctures how to make your own alcohols for drinking tradables and then uh you know for rubbing alcohols too i mean there's a lot of stuff we can learn just choose something and learn it today go start today don't wait like diamond said don't wait this second if you're going to make your move you got to do it right now there's no time left i mean we're out of time you either are or you're not going to be right now. Your yeah. choice is like the split hair. You're, you're going to split this infinitesimally small line between today of you surviving and not. Yeah, and, and to prepare for all this. and uh, I'm it, on, it, it takes a lot of time to prepare for all this. Always a pleasure. Check out David Dubon's channels. Links will be below, and we'll talk soon. Nanu, nanu.